Welcome to part two. Uh, the first thing that I want to address is uh, this is completely different to the first episode if you, or first uh, video if you've seen it. Uh, there is no need to try and uh, spread this video out to as many people as possible and create the big sort of you do one, they do one, on, or you do three, they do three, on it spreads around like a big coronavirus! This video is just me explaining uh, the situation that I am in, uh, how it came about, the sort of story behind Little Miss Toomer, and um, how I'm mentally and emotionally uh, uh, coping with it all, physically, um, what else? The treatments, the treatment that is going to be coming up. Now, believe it or not, I'm as freakishly lucky as I am freakishly unlucky. And the reason for that is uh, my tumour was something called asymptomatic. That means it didn't give out uh, symptoms. Uh, so the reason that it was discovered was because um, I'm only good at what I like doing. So I lost loads of jobs over the course of my life. And um, which meant I always needed money. So I always did loads of um, medical research trials. Uh, so that I could get down to the fucking pub. And the last medical trial that I did was uh, for something to do with the brain. I can't remember what was the um, what was the uh, the research all about, but that was the reason. Now, because they are, it was, you know, healthy medical trials, I would advise them, they're not dodgy. Uh, they go in and they scan you in a load of different ways to make sure that you're perfectly healthy before you go in. Now, because this was to do with the brain, they had to do an MRI. They do the MRI and they see that there's a little... Um, white blob in the uh, left temporal lobe in my head and it was it's called something called a glioma so the second time I go in for uh, a more detailed um, a more detailed scan that is specifically targeting like that I had some um, irradiate or not irradiated but some sort of a I think it is irradiated something like that that displays the uh, the image a lot more clearly but it's not you know gonna kill it and uh, then they saw that it was growing. Now, if it's growing, that's a red flag. So imagine that cancer is little pretty butterflies and that gliomas are the caterpillars. So when they start growing, that's them pupating and you gotta, you gotta sort that shit quick smart. So once they see that it's growing, they call up this absolute magician of a brain surgeon. He's arguably the best brain surgeon in the fucking world. He pioneered some of the surgery that's currently being done. Like he's the he's the Michael Jordan of, you know, scooping out bits of brain. His name is Tim Jones, not to be confused with Tom Jones. And uh, strangely enough, he's also a, he works 15 minutes from where I currently live. So kind of handy. Yeah, so he, he can open his open my head and he scoops out the tumor as best he can. He's really careful with the way he does it so that uh, where the tumor is, that part of the brain, apparently it's only that part of the brain because I'm right-handed. It'd be different if I was left-handed, which is, which is cool. Uh, it affects my speech and my sight. So uh, he was really careful to uh, take as little as he could while still maintaining my speech. And though you have not heard me uh, speak all throughout my life, it's pretty much the same. There was a uh, there was a a week or two where it would go up and down, and it would get better and worse, and um, uh, sometimes hilariously bad. <laughs> it was it was really weird because it didn't feel different, but it was different. And um, yeah, so he's got like. Uh, Simo Hawa level headshot accuracy. He's an absolute animal. Now, after they got the tumor out, they were able to do uh, more details, uh, more detailed um, tests on it. And unfortunately, they were able to find out that even though it was growing and it wasn't changing, apparently they look they look out for red dots when it's uh, when it's turning into that pretty little butterfly. Um, they didn't detect the red dots in the scan, but they were able to tell that uh, this is a stage three uh, tumor. And my doctor actually said that it was uh, came back as a stage four, but that he, he's the master in oncology. He's not Tim. Uh, he's the master in oncology, and he uh, he said that it, it it didn't actually classify as a stage four. But to me, that kind of felt like uh, all right. Well, it's going to be a stage four soon enough, right? Now, this is where the idea of luck becomes bizarre. 
because the life expectancy of someone in stage three is one to five years. But the all the statistics are done with people who are twice my age, they're in their 60s. And because those are the people who go in to get checks for problems that might be going on in their heads. Whereas 30 year olds, they don't fucking do that. So, so most people, well almost all people who get brain cancer at a young age, they get it detected because they start having symptoms. They start having seizures and uh, uh, other stuff like that. And brain cancer is a bit like a mosquito bite. Once you start scratching it, well, that's it. You're you're fucked. Uh, Tim said that this is how this is how rare it is. Tim does, from what I could tell, Tim seems to operate on one person, maybe four people a week. Like he's a machine. He's an absolute conveyor belt of blah. You're healed. You're healed. And uh, so Tim said that I was one of two people, who two young people who went in, got their tumor detected while it was undetectable. So it's like the the chances of detecting a stealth submarine because your ship bumps into it or something like that. Like it was completely uh, freakishly rare. And being young, fit and otherwise healthy is meant to be the biggest advantage that you can have against any sort of disease. But there's no statistics on people my age that have had their uh, their tumors detected. So it's completely unknown how much of an advantage my age is going to have against, you know, suppressing this tumor from, you know, from blimping out. Um, so I could get 10 years or I could get, you know, just one or maybe a fucking day. I don't know how, how good or bad it's going to be. No one does. So you can be a realistic optimist and expect uh, more years. But at the same time, it's like, how much? It's realistic optimism, but it's still unknown. What is known though is that my body and my mind will uh, remain uh, almost exactly as uh, effective as it is now. My muscles will respond to any sort of physical training. Um, outside of chemo, I will be able to learn new skills. Apparently there's a thing that um, there might be swelling in my brain and my... my um, Speech might go down again, but it'll bounce back up once it's done, you know, lasering my fucking head. However, when things do start to deteriorate, uh, it's going to be like, oh, there's the Goodyear blimp. And then all the humanity. And even though that sounds harsh, I definitely appreciate having, you know, five good years of being in your prime and... You know, running around, drinking whiskey, banging whores and fighting people in the streets rather than 10 years of, you know, slow degeneration with the last couple of years, you're bedridden and you're uh, like every day you are more and more of a husk of the man that you used to be. Uh, also, dying young certainly has its advantages. So one that I have thought of is that um, everyone that I currently know, well, most people that I currently know, uh, will still be alive and will still remember me. So my funeral is going to be some party. It's going to be so busy that I'll probably need bouncers to act as security guards so they can refuse the people who I secretly hate, which oh, I'll enjoy that one. Um, and then, you know, of those, of the people that I know and love, I'm not going to go to any funerals. My parents are going to be going to my funeral. I'm not going to go to them. And that's going to be sucks for them. Uh, even if I get a dog, even if I get a dog, the dog is gonna go in a will, not in a box. Like, that's, that's brilliant for me. I hated losing my dogs. And also, I can start smoking, like, doing loads of coke, and it's not like it can kill me any faster. Now, you might be thinking, Jesus, Ian's taking this rather well. If, if that happened to me, I'd be pretty bummed out. And, to be honest, I kind of think that I'm in, uh, a, like, a world of two minds. Either one... I'm completely young, numb, and in denial of uh, the reality of the situation. Or I am the Zen master of emotional stabilization. Probably due to my boundaryless sense of, okay, we can laugh at that, which has ultimately led to like this sort of Captain America-esque shield that now defends me from the sadness of dying soon. Now that said, uh, being single, I'm not very likely to get married because it's a bit of a massive ask to be like, 
you know, with that ominous future sort of in the pipeline, uh, hey, will you marry me for, you know, one to four really good years and then, you know, a really shit one at the end? I mean, like, that's how most marriages end anyway, but, you know, they're still gonna say no. And with good cause. So, no marriage, obviously, uh, that means I'm far less likely to have any kids because um, one thing that sort of adds on top of that is that uh, chemotherapy, which I've got to go through um, in four days, I've got to get started on that? Yeah, four days. Uh, chemotherapy can destroy a sperm. So that means that any child that I was going to have was going to have to be uh, going to have to be planned. There was no sort of, you know, going out, getting a lot of condoms, putting the pain in them, finding some pro-lifers and like, you know, come on, hoping for the best. Like, that. Uh, that's not going to fly. So not raising my own family, that's, that's without a doubt the biggest loss in this scenario. I never especially had any big dreams for fame or success. To be honest, I personally think that fame has a lot more downsides than upsides. All I wanted was like, you know, a fire-breathing whore of a wife, a load of kids, and just like some small platform where I could tell loads of jokes and, you know, people would laugh. But like, my biggest daydream was that I would and perform on the uh, in the Hammersmith Apollo and not even like you know have my name in lights outside I mean just get up on the fucking stage and like warm up with someone that would be enough for me now if you look at uh, any other part of this channel or any of the other videos that are gonna be added to this channel you will see that I will be making offensive jokes for every race every sexual orientation every religion 9-11, uh, Holocaust, gender, religious belief, fucking everything. I have an extremely dark sense of humor and you can bet the rent that this is going to get way worse before it gets better. Before making this video, I talked to a lot of my friends and family and many, many of them said that if I was ever going to, if I ever had a hope of getting enough people to donate money to me, uh, in order to raise enough funds to break a world record. I was going to have to stop saying like pointless shock value shit like hey, which genocide was the sexiest? And I thought about it and I decided that I got five years remaining and I'm not changing for fucking anybody. So in the wise words of my favorite convicted rapist. Well f it, it's a fight. So whatever happens, happens. Mike, why do you have to talk like that? Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Do you have a problem? Turn off your station. You know what? I think we'll end the discussion right now. Then we could. You got it. Have a nice fight, Mike. Off. Whether you like any of this content uh, or not is your opinion and you are entitled to it 100%. And you shouldn't have to change an iota. But tolerance goes two ways. I argue and debate with people all night and day but I would never try to uh, dismantle the platform that they use or try to make it so that they couldn't get on it. Please don't try and have any of my content taken down because you disagree with it or uh, you are offended by it. I don't claim to uh, speak for every Irish person or all men. So please don't say that you represent whatever uh, person you identify as. Also, if you believe that jokes are a true form of oppression, before you call me one of the, the bad ists or icks, uh, take a moment to see what the ratio is between how much I mock my own miserable situation and my shortcomings and how much I mock others. Then consider how much of a trump card it is in the oppression olympics to have a terminal disease that will last five years now to end on if you are watching this because you're sort of curious as to uh, where is this channel going to go i'm going to remain doing the exact same shit that i've been yeah you know, that i started this channel on i'm going to be doing video games i'm going to be doing little sketches every once in a while uh, stupid videos bring out the gimp the big imp sleeping. Why? Well, I guess you're gonna have to just go and wake him up then. Uh, I'm uh, going to introduce, I was gonna do it anyway, but I'm gonna introduce uh, how I physically train, how I'm gonna be training for the marathon, things like that. 
Uh, I think I will be doing that on a, uh, a separate page because someone might just be interested in fitness rather than um, the rest of the crap that I am doing. And then I'd say not a lot of it is going to be, you know, wow, 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 my chemo is hard, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to be the fucking king of chemo. Answer. Go on, sir. Ah, go on, sir. Sure, my auntie had us.